Today's episode is about fantasy football league rules. What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? And what are the ones that are up for some debate? All coming up next on this episode. Hi, I'm Gary Kurtzman. And I'm Eric Lee. And we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. And I'm excited, Gary, because in this episode, we need to get into the league rules. And these rules can either make or break whether the participants in your league are having fun and it's competitive. Absolutely. And while it's true that the majority of the rules are pretty consistent across all fantasy leagues across the country, there are a couple of really good rules that you should strongly consider adding to your league and a couple of bad ones you should strongly consider getting rid of. So you can take a look at the blog post at fantasyfootballconsultants.net for more information, but we're going to give us our two favorite. We'll start with our two favorite uh, league rules. Want to kick us off? I would happy to kick us off. One of my favorite league rules, which are available in less than 10% of the leagues across the country, is having two quarterbacks on your on your starting roster. Now, why is that? Why? Why? I mean, when you play real fantasy football, you don't play two quarterbacks. So I think in people's mindset, they don't even consider it. But what's the advantage? Well, the advantage, and if you remember your economics class back in high school and college, mm. it's all about supply and demand. Now, if you play one quarterback, then in a 10-team league or even a 12-team league, there are far more than 10 or 12 good quarterbacks in the NFL, which devalues quarterbacks greatly, right? Because when you think about it, if the 15th or 16th quarterback is still going to get you a fair amount of points from week to week, then having that Aaron Rodgers, having that Drew Brees, uh, you know, it's just not as valuable as having a great wide receiver or a great running back. Because let's face it, Eric, you know, most leagues have two or three wide receivers and two running backs. So in a 10-team league, what is that, 30 wide receivers, 20 running backs? There are nowhere close to 30 good wide receivers in the NFL. Nowhere close to 20 good running backs in the NFL. And what that means is that you got to draft those early because you got to have the best ones. If you don't, you're never going to win the league. So you end up ignoring quarterbacks until round four or five. It, frankly, no one would ever sort an NFL team that way. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, most people would think best quarter, uh, best player maybe in the NFL, and uh, he's not getting selected in the first two rounds in NFL's any league if it's not a two QB league. Absolutely. I would go as far as to say if you were going to start, picture yourself as an NFL owner, if you were going to start your NFL team and you could select one person in any position from around the league, you'd probably pick your starting quarterback. And yet in fantasy, you wouldn't do it till round four or five. So I would just end this discussion by saying, if you've never played in a 2QB league, and we have, um, try it. Try it in your league and see, see how it works. Here's another uh, league rule that we both love that a lot of leagues don't uh, use, and that is penalize the last place team. Yes. So um, to me, the biggest negative of any fantasy football league is when owners start to become disinterested. And that happens when the, the, you become 0-6, 1-6, and, and, and you are realistically out of the playoff race. Mm -hmm. But if you need to make sure you are out of last place, you're still going to turn in your lineup. You're still going to make quality pickups. You're not going to make foolish trades. And how many times have you, the viewer, been in a fantasy league where Bill, who sits at 0-5, suddenly doesn't give a darn anymore about his starting lineup? and you need him to be one of your good buddies so you can be in playoff position and he starts guys that are on buys he starts guys that are injured and why in the world would your slack off friend Bill do that? Because he knows he's out of the playoffs and he's got nothing left to play for. Give Bill something to play for. Say uh, you know hey, you know what if you end up in last place there's going to be a pretty stiff penalty and all of a sudden he's going to put his best foot forward and put his best team out there. Yeah, penalties that you know, are good is you, you can tie it to money, uh, make sure that they have to pay a certain amount. You can be really mean and penalize them the next year's draft. They may not come back. Um, but my favorite is just public humili humiliation. So I, uh, there's a league that I am affiliated with where you, you have a license plate that says, I finished last in my fantasy.
Fantasy Football League. You can go on Amazon. They're only six bucks. Uh, and uh, you have to put that whole offseason on your car. I think they'll think next a little harder about putting the lineup in then. And if you think that's a little draconian, hey, there's always a season-ending party. Last place buys beers. That'll do it just as well. All right. So let's talk about the rules that we dislike that leagues out there are doing, and we just can't stand it. And my top one, thankfully a lot of leagues aren't doing this, but they're still out there, is they're having the fantasy Super Bowl in week 17. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, look, in week 17, you have uh, teams that are making the playoffs that have already clinched everything, so their, their stars are sitting out. And then that means that someone else who's a backup, who's not on anybody's roster, all of a sudden has a big day. Let me give you some examples. How many of you out there, last year's fantasy team, had starters from the Philadelphia Eagles, from the New England Patriots, from the Los Angeles Rams? Of course you did. These are some of the top teams in the NFL. That's why they made the playoffs. They had all clinched their playoff seating by week 17. So if you had one of the starters, you had, uh, let's say you had Tom Brady, let's say you had Todd Gurley, let's say you had any of the multitude of talented people from those teams, if you were left playing for your Super Bowl in NFL Week 17, you're hosed. Yeah, so it's just a stupid, stupid rule. It's just, uh, yep, it's Simon just, Cobb will tell you how bad it is. God, I thought that was absolutely dreadful. Uh, if the NFL teams aren't playing their players, then neither should you have to. What's yours, Gary? So uh, mine is this arbitrary rule that you still find in so many fantasy teams out there, so many fantasy leagues out there. It's the uh, it's the 100 yard rushing or receiving or 300 yard bonus. So most leagues, you, you, you catch the ball, you gain 10 yards, you get a point. Uh, catch the ball, run the ball, or if you throw the ball for 20 or 25 yards, you get a point. And then somehow there's this arbitrary 100-yard demarcation where if you rush the ball for 99 yards, let's do all the math here, you get 9.9 .9 points. You rush the ball for 100 yards, you get a three-point bonus. So now instead of 10 points, you get 13. That, that, that one extra yard is worth over three points points why makes no sense my guy rushed 199 yards he did just about as well as your 100 yard rushing and yet you're killing me 13 points to 10 i don't get it and i never did makes no sense and what's difficult about it is almost hostile to project for that all right so uh yeah. and what we do here is we're giving you the best projections so walk up to that commissioner of yours if you have bonus points in your league and just scrap it not necessary. I guarantee you, if you don't, it's going to decide a game down the road, and it's one that you're darn well going to wish you were on the winning side of. It's it's that big. So we agree on all those four rules, uh, but anyone who knows Gary and I, we don't always agree. So uh, let's get into a very important rule where there is disagreement. <laughs> Gary, every league out there during the course of the season has to have waiver wire pickups. Of course. You have to have the ability to improve your team by doing waiver wires. And I believe we both agree that you need to have some type of waiver wire system, a period of time in which uh, everyone can get their bids in for the week. Certainly. Because every week in the NFL, as everybody knows, there are always going to be players that are uh, becoming valuable due to injury, becoming valuable valuable due to trade or otherwise are going to be people that uh, get plucked off the waiver wire. So it's important to have a system in place uh, so the teams can better their rosters by picking up those players. And what we do agree on is we, we, we there needs to be a system that's just not first come first serve. Whoever can jump on the computer first at uh, Sunday at uh, 410 because a, some player got hurt. 
there needs to be an opportunity for everyone to potentially get their bids in. Uh, well, that's true, but uh, I'll tell you now the system that I prefer, and I'll let my colleague Eric describe the system he prefers, is something called FAAB. Uh, the acronym loosely stands for uh, Free Agent Attractor Budget. So uh, basically, you are given a certain number of dollars, certain number of points, whatever you want to call it, and that's a, that's a static pool that you have that needs to last the entire season. So just as an example, uh, you're given 100 pickup points, and uh, um, if you need to make, uh, you know, two pickups throughout the season, four pickups, eight pickups, go hog wild, make 20 pickups during the course of the season, uh, you only have 100 points uh, to satisfy those needs across the entire season. So you need to be very thoughtful and analytical about the worth of each player that you're picking up and how many uh, pickup points they're worth. Because once you've spent 100 points, you're done and uh, no more roster moves. Okay, I get it, Gary. I get it. The It allows everybody an opportunity to get any player they want as long as they're willing to fork out the, the money. And I, and I get that. I like it. But the problem with that is... Fantasy football lives and breathes on the ability of competitiveness, that every team is competitive and you need something in place to help the teams that are struggling. So I rather have the waiver wire selected by reverse order of standings, but only on one level. So in other words, the first, the last place team gets the priority for one pickup for that particular uh, week. And then it scrolls next to the next, uh, team with the lowest rating. So it it isn't a necessarily a fat budget. Also, what this does is it's a lot easier to maintain and keep a uh, record of if you're the commissioner. Yeah, but did we suddenly become a communist uh, society here? Yes. Are we suddenly yeah. valuing last place over first place? Come on! There's a reason why his teams can be in last place sometimes, right? Because he didn't make the right roster move. So why should I give him the benefit of doubt of uh, being able to pick up the best players to better his roster. Hey, it is not my fault that there are people out there that are in last place. I don't see why I should be penalized for that. That makes no sense to me. Right. Instead, if I like a player better than he likes a player, and I'm willing to fork out the, the chimmy change for that, then I should get the player. Apparently, That's my co-host believes, for example, in the NFL draft, that whatever team out there wants to just pay money to get a player, they should get them out of college. No, we actually have a reverse standings order in the NFL draft why not the same in fantasy league? Well, because quite frankly, all the NFL teams are trying to better themselves. I'm not sure that that's true with all the fantasy football teams. And frankly, at the end of the day, again, I don't want to be penalized just because some other schlock is in last place. Hey, if I see a player that I'm willing to pony up the money for, hey, I should be able to pony up the money and go get him. You know what I, I mean? I agree as an individual player, but we're talking about as the commissioner. As a commissioner, you should be focused on making sure your league is competitive and this rule by letting the teams that are doing the worst get a, an advantage will make your league more competitive and more fun for everybody it will definitely make your league more competitive i will concede that point uh it's not going to make it more fun for the guys in first place and who can't get any good players on his roster because in a 12 team league that means there are 11 other teams out there that can all pick up players before he can so todd Gurley gets injured and, uh, you know, he wants to pick up the new star Ram running back. He has no shot whatsoever. Uh, that hardly seems fair to me. So you've gotten two different points on this. We would like to throw it out to you in the discussion comments. Who's right and who's wrong? Or <laughs> however you happen to see it. So make sure you get those opinions in the comment section. And if you want to hear some more analysis about league rules or some more analysis about player projections, both for the current week and for the regular season and player and roster analysis, come to fantasyfootballconsultants.net. And we can't thank you guys enough for your participation and your involvement in our YouTube channel. We're new this year, so if you like our content, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. And like I said, we can't thank you enough. Thank you, gentlemen. Someday I will repay you. <laughs> 
So with that, uh, we'll sign off this time, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Just when you think this show is terrible, something wonderful happens. <laughs>